Hey guys, Redneck Mini 14 here, and today I'm gonna do a comparison of my two M1 carbines. I have a Universal and I have an Iver Johnson. Um, the reason for doing this comparison is because it's a pretty well-known fact that in the M1 carbine world, that Universal, um, they started out making um, military-style M1 carbines and then um, eventually they went and s turned them into kind of their own design of an M1 carbine, whereas pretty much all other manufacturers um, that were making actual 30 carbine uh, M1 carbines, um, they pretty much all stuck with the military uh, surplus version of the rifle. Um, and uh, this video is pretty much just showing you all the differences that I've come across since owning these two. I am not the end-all be-all expert on these two rifles, but uh, the Ivor Johnson is basically going to serve as my military surplus style um, M1 carbine, and then of course the Universal. This is a um, second generation Universal, which is the non M1 carbine, or non-military style M1 carbine. So, uh, first things first, as you can see, the stocks are very different. Um, now, most of your um, actual military M1 carbines are not going to have this metal heat shield. This is pretty much, um, it's a reproduction type rifle um, heat shield that Ivor Johnson, I think Plainfield, and even Universal put on their rifles. Um, but, you know, all other like your typical M1 carbine is going to have this wooden heat shield, um, just like the Universal does. Um, but as you can see, the Ivor Johnson is a much thinner profile um, stock. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. So the, the Universal is a pretty, pretty thick, beefy, stock uh, maybe not so much back here but compared to like up here um, all this is a little bit thicker than the Ivor Johnson and um, the sight is different actually both sights are different this is not the original sight that I had with the rifle the sight that it came with was a Williams uh, sight like a Williams leaf sight which I didn't like I replaced it with this Ken sight uh, which is a little more close to like what an actual M1 carbine sight is, but this is still an aftermarket sight, and I don't really know what the original sight would have been on this rifle. But on the front sight, it does resemble an M1 carbine sight, but it is a little bit different just in the profile of the wings and the, the little windows on the sides. I have not put any calipers up to these barrels, but um, this one to me looks a little bit thinner. And again, the sight is a little bit different. Um, there's the front profile of the barrel. It is a little squared off there. If I don't know if, if it'll focus, my camera sucks. But uh, it, the barrel crown is actually pretty squared off on this Ivor Johnson. Um, I don't remember. It's a little more rounded on the Universal. Now, um, Ivor Johnson is kind of a cheaper version of an M1 carbine, um, but like say your actual like Winchesters and Saginaws, they might have had an actual barrel crown similar to this Universal. The barrel bands are different. So on this one, if you're familiar with um, the M1 carbine and their actual like uh, bayonet lugs, so the bayonet lug is actually part of the barrel band, um, and it's just an extension of the barrel band that would stick out, and you have like this little bitty tube here, and the bayonet lug would be like right here, and this tube would extend to about here, so you'd have a bayonet lug here. So it's kind of like a uh, a crossover or a hybrid rather um, barrel band on this universal where you do have the tube or at least half of the tube where the bayonet lug would be um, so that's kind of interesting other than that the actual band itself looks like 
it would work on a regular M1 carbine, but don't take my word for that because I've not put calipers or anything like that on this, this gun um, versus this gun, so I couldn't tell you if they were actually the same or not. Uh, the Ivor Johnson does not have that little extension. Um, but as far as I know, you could put a, an actual bayonet lug um, on this, this rifle, which I plan on doing. The sling swivel, uh, it's really tight on this one, but this one's kind of like, uh, like a bent wire, kind of. Um, just kind of like a, a piece of wire that was uh, heated up and bent to take the shape of the um, sling swivel. Um, and I think that's how the actual M1 carbines came back in the day. This one is a little bit different. It's actually thicker and it's flat. So it's actually like a machined piece of metal in the shape of the sling swivel as opposed to like a piece of wire that was bent around. Um, and of course different manufacturers have different sling swivels on their rifles. Um, let's go to the trigger guards. So as you can see, you have a very thick trigger guard and um, just a slightly different shape to the overall trigger guard on this universal. If you go down here, it is much thinner. The trigger guard itself is much thinner. And I don't know if you paid attention or if I even really showed it, but on the safety on the universal, there is little colored dots, so it would be red and green for safe and fire. The Ivor Johnson does not have that, and I don't believe any other M1 carbines do have that, and I don't know if you'll be able to really see it, but there's a green dot here and a red dot there. Um, they do take the same magazines, so this is just a, kind of a standard USGI magazine. Um, it fits pretty loosely in this gun. You stick it in this gun, not a whole lot of wobble there. I think I actually just kind of messed up that magazine. <sighs> I might have to play around with that and take that, that little base plate off. This is not a very good magazine from what I can tell. Um, I have other magazines, but you stick it in this rifle, very, very loose. Um, other than that, the outside appearances of the two rifles are pretty similar. Um, I mean, there are a lot of differences, but there are, I mean, the overall look of it is pretty much the same. You do have, on this particular universal, you have a different op rod and charging handle where it's just kind of like um, a stamped piece of metal. Um, that's been folded over and shaped like this, and there's no bolt hold open, and it's cut out here, so you can actually see where the where the, how the bolt rotates in there, versus pretty much all your other M1 carbines, where it's like a machined piece of metal. Actually, this one's probably cast, but um, it's a big mach machined chunk of steel coming up here. You can't see that in that in a little cutout, and there is a bolt hole open feature, which I really, really like. Other than that, pretty much the only differences I know of are on the inside of the rifles. So if you see here, um, you have a little cutout on pretty much all of your M1 carbines for the op rod. Um, if, it, if this was a wooden heat shield, it would be a little more obvious, but there's a little cutout versus there's not one on that one. And you can kind of see if you can look in there, you might not be able to pick it up, but there's a, you, you can see the recoil spring. Um, there's a single recoil spring that actually, um, the spring on M1 carbines, it's on the right side and your, your guide rod and everything's are, you know, on this side where the actual charging handle is. The biggest difference with a universal is your op rod actually goes under the rifle and you'll have two recoil springs and guide rods going under the bottom of the barrel as opposed to along the side of the barrel. So that is the biggest difference in these two rifles um, is 
the internals. And obviously, as you can see from all the other differences I've shown you, very few things between the two rifles are actually interchangeable. Um, the hand guards may be interchangeable, but probably not because of the thickness of the stock. Um, the barrel bands may be interchangeable, but again, I don't know um, the actual dimensions. Like you, you, we're talking about, like you know, thousands or maybe even up to hundredths of an inch, but. You know, there could be slight differences in sizes to where those don't work. And again, the barrels may be a slightly different thickness, but I don't know. Um, the stocks, I'm not sure if this kind of looks like a walnut stock to me. Um, it's a darker wood. Um, it actually looks pretty good in my opinion. Um, I really like this stock and, and how it looks. This particular stock on this Iver Johnson is um, a birch stock and it's pretty dinged up as you can see. It doesn't feel too bad. Like a lot of these you can't even really feel just a little bit. It's mostly the um, the finish of the wood. It's not so much that the wood is gouged. It's just the finish. Um, but this is a birch stock and this is um, pretty common on Ivor Johnson's and a lot of the um, aftermarket, or not aftermarket, but the a lot of the reproduction M1 carbines. Um, that's pretty common as well as being a blued steel gun versus a um, oh versus being a parkerized gun. So those are all the differences that I'm able to see with the naked eye. I mean there are probably a few um, other differences that I'm not aware about. Again most of its you know, the biggest differences are internal. Um, the outward appearance of the rifles, obviously, you can see are different, different contours in the stock, maybe different thickness of the barrel, um, all that. But um, I haven't taken, well, I've taken this one apart. I know what this looks like. I have not taken this particular one apart. I will get to that eventually because um, I got to clean it and lube it and everything. But um, as far as I know, the Iver Johnsons and like the Plainfields and Auto Ordnance, Inland, and all those other manufacturers that make M1 carbines, they are pretty much your standard military surplus style M1 carbine as far as the parts interchangeability and everything versus the Universal, which is just a completely different animal um, with maybe a few different things that you could interchange. And then, of course, the magazines uh, you can interchange as well. So which one do I like personally better? Um, you know, I, I like different things about different about each one of them. I like the wood on this particular one. I like the fact that you have different colored dots for the safety. Um, not a big deal for me. Like it doesn't matter. Like I don't need the colors to know what's safe and what's fire. But say for a new shooter, uh, the green and red. Um, they are a big help, especially if you're training a, a young kid. Um, that's just kind of a nice thing to have, but it's not necessary. Um, trying to think what else I really like about this rifle versus this one. Oh, I like the, the fact that the magazines actually are tight in here versus this one where they're super duper loose. Um, you know what? That might be about all I like about this particular M1 carbine um, and what I like about the Ivor Johnson is pretty much the fact that it is a mill serp style rifle as far as parts interchangeability so I can get a bayonet lug I can get a rear sight I can get uh, you know replace the trigger group the front sight the hand guard can be replaced pretty much everything on this rifle can be replaced with a military surplus part that you can get on Gunbroker or Numerich or wherever. Um, so it's a lot easier to find parts to replace broken parts on this particular rifle versus this one. Um, as far as I know, the Ivor Johnson is a little bit easier to take down as well because with the Universal with those double recoil springs, it is a giant pain in the butt. I know because I've done it several times. Um, other than that, you know, I, I probably would take the Ivor Johnson over the Universal. That's just me. Um, I personally, I think it's a little bit more sleeker looking of a gun. Um, 
is it more reliable? I don't know because I haven't shot it yet. Um, but you know, M1 carbines are not the most reliable gun out there because some magazines are good, some are bad. Um, it's just the way it is. So anyway, that is the Universal M1 Carbine versus the Ivor Johnson M1 Carbine. Subscribe to my channel, like me on Facebook. I'm Redneck Mini 14, and until next time, be safe.